Where do we look for strength, for comfort, for help, for love, for acceptance and joy? Where do we look for life? According to the Bible, the answer is all the wrong places. We are inveterate idolaters. We are always setting our hearts on idols, on things that are not God, false gods, fake gods. The human race was made to worship, but estranged from the life of God, we worship everything but God. The very first word from Sinai was this. Let me read to you what it more literally says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. You shall have no other gods before my presence or before my face. Now, it has been the presence or the face of the Lord who has saved the people and brought them to Sinai. Uh, see a place like uh, Deuteronomy 4, verse 37, for instance. It's the presence of the Lord that saves God's people. And it's this presence or the face of the Lord who Moses meets with in the tent of meeting in Exodus 33, for instance. Moses had been meeting with the presence of the Lord in the tent of meeting face to face as someone speaks with their friend. And then in the same chapter, Exodus 33, the most high on top of the mountain, tells Moses, don't worry, as you set out on your journey through the wilderness, he says, my presence will go with you. My face will go with you. In other words, the father sends the son to deliver the people. And here in Exodus 20, the father says to the people, don't have any other gods before my presence, before my face, before my son. You see, it's the Son of God who is the true divine image. He is the one who we're meant to look to in order to see God. He is the one we look to in order to receive life. But when people resist the first word from Sinai, look to Jesus, they will immediately look to other images. Spirituality abhors a vacuum. As G.K. Chesterton once said, when a man stops believing in God, he doesn't then believe in nothing, he believes in anything. When you stop worshipping Jesus, you start worshipping something else, anything else. And so here comes the second word from Sinai. The second word from Sinai from verse 4. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. We'll think about that tomorrow. But do you think of yourself as an idolater? Perhaps if you don't think of yourself as an idolater, it's because you think, well, I haven't bowed down to any statues recently. Um, but this word for idolatry in the old King James Version, it was the graven images that is the title for our video today. Um, these graven images are not defined by the materials they're made of, but by the effect they have on you. It's not how they're produced, it's what they produce in you. They are the things that we bow down to and serve. So obviously, it's stupid to make a wooden statue and then serve it. Uh, you can read Isaiah chapter 46 to read a devastating send-up of that kind of idolatry. Uh, but the Bible speaks equally of the graven images of our hearts. See Ezekiel chapter 14, for instance. Our hearts are captured by any number of enslaving passions. So we might start a hobby and then get obsessed, or we choose a career and then become enslaved to it, or we embark on some great scheme and we find ourselves dancing to its beat. That's just like carving an idol and then bowing down to it. We start off in charge, but soon we bow to it. Soon it rules us. Isn't that the nature of our hearts? We go after sex, money and power, but the things we choose end up choosing us. For me, it was something as, as paltry as cricket. I remember I used to have a t-shirt that said, cricket is life, the rest is mere detail. Uh, and though I'd laugh about it, that was essentially the way I lived. I'd spend every hour I could chasing a little red ball around a field. And, and when my cricketing dreams were ended, how did I feel? Did I feel like a failed cricketer? No, I felt like a failed person, actually. When something is your life and it crumbles, it feels like death which only goes to show it was a graven image all along, a created thing, a good thing. But when you turn it into a God thing, when you invest your hopes and your dreams in these little idols, they break your heart. More importantly, this breaks God's heart, as we'll see tomorrow. His very first word of the 10 on Mount Sinai is seek your life in Christ. And that's the only solution to our idolatry. We'll only wean our hearts from graven images when we behold the true image of God, Jesus Christ. 
As the old Scottish, pre uh, Scottish preacher Thomas Chalmers once said, the heart is so constituted that the only way to dispossess it of an old affection is by the expulsive power of a new one. This works in every area of life, religious or otherwise. At university, I remember we, you know, me and my friends would talk about the countries we'd visited and the parties that we'd been to and the romantic conquests. And, the, and then fast forward five years and we are changed people. Now we compete over, you know, who's worked the longest week. I've worked 60 hours this week. No, that's nothing. I've worked 70 hours. I haven't been home since October. You know, the partying has cut back drastically. How? Fresh willpower? No, new passion. Fast forward another five years, and now it's kids that dominate the discussion. Now we all have a much healthier perspective on the, our careers, but how? Has it been our resolve, our willpower? Has it, has it been fresh wisdom? Not really, it's just been a new controlling passion. In Chalmers words, there is an expulsive power to a new affection. But there is the greatest power in that original affection, the presence and wisdom and image of God, Jesus Christ. He is our first love. Returning again and again to Him is our only liberation from enslaving idols. We must see Him as our true source of strength, comfort and joy. Think of Him again today. There you are going after idols, other gods, like some adulterous wife playing the field. And here he comes to you again, your true husband. And instead of cutting you off forever, he sweeps you off your feet and he says, you've taken your eyes off me, but I never took my eyes off you. Jesus says to us, look, forsake the fakes. Look again to the real deal. As 1 John chapter 5, verse 20 says, Jesus Christ is the true God. He is eternal life. So little children, keep yourselves from idols. Mm -hmm.